Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, Kelvin Piment reveals his Photoshop workflow to the world. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Germany. I am a French photographer from the beautiful, the amazing cities of Paris, France. And my friend Kelvin Piment is also from the amazing city of Paris, France. Bonjour. Bonjour, Kelvin. So, for those who you don't know, Kelvin is my best friend partner in crime in business and has been my teacher for Photoshop for the last 12 years. He is the one that got me into photography 12 years ago. He had an agency in Paris where he's been retouching and designing for the biggest brand on the planet. He has made some of the most known logos you can find on earth. Some of them are confidential. You cannot say that he did it, but he did it. And uh, he's been teaching me Photoshop. He doesn't like when I speak to him, speak about him like this, but that's the truth. He's really a master at this tool. And I've been asking Kelvin for months to reveal his full workflow. How does he create all these composites, this crazy world? And he finally came up with a course with how many projects? Uh, we have a total of seven projects. Seven projects. The first one, which is very simple, we're going to give for free. Yes. So I just wanted to work through the different projects so you can see what they look like. So that's the first one we're going to give for free, right? Yeah which is the, uh, it's a lake basically, and that's the after we have the, all the reflections from the mountain. I have no idea how you did that. And it looks just so real and so dramatic. You know, I love that. Yeah. That's, that's gonna work really well on Instagram. Now the next one is, uh, I don't know how you call it, the man on the moon. Yeah. I mean, you take the Milky Way, you take the moon, and you get this crazy science fiction sort of landscape. I love the luminosity, I mean. Yeah, the, part of the trick in this one was, once you put everything together, that's fine, and, and, and you've probably tried this before where you put a bunch of layers or elements together, but then how do you not only make them blend, because blending is, is good, it's important, but you also want to accentuate where do you want the attention. And if it's on the moon and the man, then the lighting has to be just right. Right. So that was, that was the trick of this, uh, of this project, and it's, uh, it's actually simple once you, once you learn how to do it. Yeah, I love the result. The next one is my favorite. Actually, the next one was kind of like the question, the desire that started this whole story. I shot this photo of the Eiffel Tower at 4 in the morning, and I wanted to put a tiger by the Eiffel Tower. I thought it was crazy. I tried it many hours, and it just wouldn't fit right. So I asked, I begged actually Kelvin to show me how he could put in a tiger from the zoo in the Eiffel Tower and I find the result amazing. I mean, this is one of my favorite projects of this whole workflow. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a challenge to find uh, the right tiger, uh, but once you find the right tiger, um, blending him right, putting the right shadows cast by the, you know, by the lamp, and then putting footprints and making sure the lighting was right. And yeah, it was uh, creating snow, putting snow in his back and snow in the background. You see snow in the background, but there's snow close to the lens over here. Mm. So uh, it, was, it was a fun project. I really enjoyed doing it. Yeah, um, it's my favorite one. I think this is such a fantastic photo. Uh, the next one is, uh, oh yeah, that's what I call the Photoshop iconic project. So tell me about this one. So here um, I wanted to basically create uh, a composite that has clearly that shows it's Photoshop. Not in that it's badly Photoshopped, mm -hmm. but that it cannot exist other than in a, a Photoshop composite. So we took you know, a light bulb, took some water, took a clownfish, put some clouds in there and some birds, added a sun, you know, put some drops below and some lighting. And you know, we, get, we end up with this, which I'm really happy about. There's some reflections going on and putting some shading. There's, you learn a lot of tools on this. It's, it's, it's not just a composite. There's a lot of tools and techniques that you get uh, when studying that project. It's great. Then we have the man flying with actually a man jumping in a lake and now he jumps in New York. And I love the result. It's really breathtaking. Mm. So, um, yeah, you said something about the designing on this one. Yeah, uh, the interesting aspect of this was I wanted him to look like he's flying and not falling. Right. And, um, and this, this oftentimes this happens when you have an idea. And you're like, like for example, you're like, I, like the ti I want a tiger in front of the Eiffel Tower. So it's a good idea. Mm. And then how do you execute it? And you have to find a few things. And in this case, the trick was to find birds. Mm. Because the birds relate them to flying, not falling. Mm. So now he looks more like he's going forward as opposed to going down. Yeah, so. it looks very realistic. Oh, this is a funny story. I was a couple of weeks ago in Vatican and they have this beautiful model of the whole Vatican. And I gave the photo to Kelvin and it turned into a landscape. Like it was shot by a drone and, you know, with sort of the dramatic black and white look that, I'm, that I really love. 
and uh, I'm really wonder how you did that. <laughs> yeah, those, uh, those, yeah, it's it's pretty simple, but it's it was a fun project. Yeah. Okay, well, this one is crazy. I mean, take uh, you know, like a beer, a girl, and a leaf, and you get that. Yeah. Uh, this is wow. This is also a very iconic Photoshop. Yeah, it was uh, so I wanted to I wanted to address you know transparency with water, mm. refractions through water and glass. Uh, proper, you know, uh, you see the uh, reflection over here and it's sharp over here and it gets progressively blurry mm. and, uh, you know, and it kind of disappears as well. The lighting that comes from below the glass lights up the girl. And there's, you know, there's a lot of, I wanted it to be challenging so that by the time you're here, it's actually simple. By the time you're at this last project in the course, because everything was layered and you progressively learn all these techniques, uh, at the end, I wanted something challenging, and it is, hmm. but it's actually simple because it's just a question of knowing how to do these step by step. And yeah. once you know them, it's really simple. And I'll tell you something, I have been using Photoshop for 10 years now, and I am not capable to do any of these projects. I would need to look at the tutorials to be able to do it, but I am going to do it because I see more and more in the industry that, you know, uh, even commercially, we need to be able to do this type of image for some clients because they want, you know, fantasy they want they want something that doesn't exist and you need to be able to deliver it as a photographer it's a great tool to have and i think it's one of the best out there so thank you so much for doing this course thank you. check it out you have a discount if you want to buy it and really it's probably one of the best course out there for this type of you know composite and fantasy and just being able to do anything with photoshop so if there's ever one course like this you want to buy that is it check it out all right and now the first free lesson right yep so here you go, the first free lesson from my friend Kelvin. Welcome to the first lesson of my Photoshop workflow course. In this lesson, we're going to cover what the workflow and process is of getting a photo that has some form of water, glass, or any kind of reflection, and how to make it a little more dramatic. Give it that little something that makes it special. So here you can see the before and the after. It's actually really simple. The, the change is pretty dramatic, but I like it. All right, so for this first lesson, uh, go into the uh, folder with the lessons, and you'll see this 01 landscape water. So just open that JPEG into Photoshop, and we have it here. Okay, let me just reduce that. So I have the Essentials uh, workspace, which you can change over here. See, if you hit Essentials, it should look exactly like this. And because I actually don't want this group, I'm gonna close it, close tab group, and I have a little more space. All right, so, um, First things first, what I want to do in here is essentially show you how to um, create more reflective water and make it look even silkier. This is actually really nice, but we can make it look even more interesting. So uh, let me show you. Uh, first thing we do is um, we're going to address this actually uh, by bank, all right? So I have this bank over here that I want a reflectiveness to it, and then this bank, and then this bank. So it's really three different banks. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer, just drag the background to the new icon over here, and it creates a copy. All right, and then uh, what we're going to do is uh, transform this. So if you go to the Edit and Free Transform, you get the Free Transform uh, box here, and you can right-click in here and say Flip Vertical. All right, so now it's upside down. And you can bring this down, hold down holding down Shift. And I want to use these mountains um, in the reflectiveness. I'm just gonna hit return, so that's applied now. And uh, before we uh, continue, I need to, we need to actually break the image up. So we, we're missing uh, our rulers here. So if you just uh, go into here and hit rulers, now we have our rulers. And I do this because I want guides. And we're gonna uh, click from the ruler and bring out a guide. I want one right here that's basically gonna cut this, this bank and separating it from this one. And we'll do another one these two are kind of overlapping a little bit, so we'll just take it right there. All right. So what does this mean? I bring back this layer, which I hid by holding on the eye, the little eye icon, and I'm going to bring the image all the way up, and we're going to split it up. So we're going to split into three. So first, make a selection of the right side, and you're going to go to a layer, and you say new, new layer via cut, all right, or the the uh, shortcut Shift Command J. All right, and on a, on a PC, that's Shift-Control-J. All right, so you see that separated out and made two layers out of that selection. I'm going to go here and select the one on the left, and same thing, new layer via cut. All right, and now I can hide these guys. They no longer need to be here. 
So we can go to view and extras, show extras, command H is good enough. There we go. So we have a little little uh, bleed over here, but that's fine for now. Okay, let's go to the right side and uh, we're gonna hide these other ones. Uh, in fact, let's make a group out of these. So you're gonna shift click this and this and then the little group icons and now we have our group in here and the layers are inside. We'll name this uh, reflections, okay? And these layers, uh, they're actually all going to be at soft lights, okay? And now um, with the move tool up here, bring this down and I want, see what I want is this, this mountain range, I want it to be reflected in the water here. So I kind of find this is the match, this is the exact mirror point right here, right? And then now I'm gonna hit Command T for the free transform like we did earlier which you can find also in the edit menu, free transform. And I'm going to hold on the command on this right side and shift, and I'm basically gonna skew the whole image to try to create more mirrored uh, image in here so it's a little more, it looks like a mirror. I'm trying to make that coast kind of match right there in, uh, in the middle. So um, we can also, let's bring this up a little bit. I wanna try uh, to, just make this a little less tall, all right? I'm squeezing it. I know I'm cheating, it's not supposed to be like that, but I wanna get as much reflectiveness as possible. Okay, so something like this, I think is pretty good. Okay, and I hit return. And then I take the next one. So the middle one, let's bring this up a little higher. And once again, soft light. And command T. And let's bring it down and find the middle part. So the where it's actually mirrored, and it would be somewhere up here. Yeah, here we go, something like this. And uh, command shift to really skew this down here, something like that. Okay, once again, I think we need to make it a little less tall, something like that, which means we can bring this down. I'm trying to get more, more of that reflectiveness in it, okay? And also I want this to kind of match. So you see this, this kind of a, looks like a, it's kind of meets, oops, undo that bit. There we go. Okay, something like that, maybe a little higher. Okay, that's not too bad. And if I do bring this, I can't do, I can't do too much here. All right, that's good enough for this one. Hit return. And then we're gonna do the third one over here. Once again, soft lights. And this one should be a little easier. It's a little flatter. Command T and then hold on Command and Shift or Control and Shift on PC. Let's make this big. So I'm holding Option, which means that when I reduce it, it reduces it on both sides, which is a nice little feature. And let's bring this up a little higher, a little higher. Here we go. And let's see if we get any anything in it. I think it's pretty good. Somewhere around here. All right. <clears throat> okay. So now we have that. Now the problem is it's obviously going over everything else and we don't want that. Also another thing is I want this to kind of fade out because it's it gets cut off so I don't want that. Um, but we'll we'll fix this in a second. Go to the group here and and you hold down the alt key while you make a layer mask. That adds a layer mask that hides everything. All right? So it's all black. And if I take a brush, B for brush, and we make a um, let's do a smaller Let's do a pretty small brush. Something like this is good enough. And we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to unmask the whole water area, all right? So hit this little button here, or X. And now, you can take a bigger brush, and the opacity has to be on 100. You go in here, and on the mask, and I'm basically now going to reveal what, what we had, those, those layers that we created, right? So like this. And you see it's kind of adding this pretty cool depth. I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit. So Command and Alt and hit the plus. It's a nice, neat little uh, way to zoom in. And uh, there you go. Make it a little smaller here. Whoops, not too small. And just kind of add this on the coast. Yeah, so you can you can kind of play around with the, the amount of detail you want to do on it. Um, I don't mind overlapping a little bit on the land. kind of darkens it a little bit. And... Um, yeah, and that, that sort of mirrored look really, I don't know, it gives it that extra depth that I don't really want it on the island too much, so kind of just hide that around there. Okay, 
what are we looking at here? It's pretty good. Okay. And we need this N2. So going here, let's make this a little small. The shortcut, by the way, for the uh, changing your brush is Control and Alt. A uh, shortcut that you should get familiar with because it is very useful and will change your speed considerably. Um, all right, so I'm just I'm just brushing it in here, all 100%. I, mean, I could do this at varying degrees, but I kind of like kind of like seeing it like this. I'm like revealing this reflection. That's kind of cool. So something like this. Let's get a little bigger here. Try not to go on the land. Try to just keep it on the water. And you see, it's it's doing this almost dodge and burn feel to the water. All right. <clears throat> so um, here you notice that I kind of faded it out here. That's because my image was actually cut. So and if you look at before and after, that's pretty, 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 pretty cool. I like that. So that's a cool little trick, and it uh, really helps uh, bring uh, bring some life back into uh, some some water. Another thing that what I, that I would do is uh, go in here at the top of the uh, reflections and and take a uh, create a curves adjustment layer, and let's just do um, a little more contrast. So darkens the darks and lighten the lightens the uh, highlights. Now you'll notice that this curve um, probably looks upside down to you. The to to get the uh, display options, you click up here, and you'll notice that mine's at pigment ink, and, it, and yours is probably at set to light, which means that the shadows are on the left, and you darken your shadows by doing this, and you lighten your highlights by raising it up here. So this is the default, and I like seeing it like this, because I come from a print background, and it's just the old habit. So something like that, and, and it would be nice to have a little vibrancy. And you notice that it's only doing it on these areas that are masked, and that's because it's within the group. That's, uh, that's a pretty cool trick, too. So let's go to the vibrance, and let's just uh, crank it up a little bit, get some of those blues kind of coming out. So let's see that before, after. That's pretty cool. And the whole thing before and after, pretty dramatic, pretty dramatic change. All right, so and we can just go ahead and save as, and we'll put it in this thing in landscape water, and now you can check it out, and you'll have that PSD. There you go. All right, guys, I hope you liked this first free lesson. Check out uh, the link below this video to get access to the full course with a great discount. Thank you again, Calvin. If you like this video, please give it thumbs up, you know, like it, and don't hesitate to leave a comment. And mesdames et messieurs, au revoir. Au revoir.